Hello folks, this is Nitin uh, welcoming you to the AI University channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning, deep learning, AI, big data Hadoop, virtual reality and cloud computing. In this video, I'm going to explain the steps of how to choose an appropriate algorithm for building a machine learning model. If you are new to data science world, then you might, uh, you know, or would have encountered this situation a lot of times. You might have wished to, you know, find out a way using which you could, uh, you know, choose a specific algorithm for a business problem. And, uh, you know, I'm going to explain this process of choosing an appropriate algorithm by, in fact, taking an algorithmic approach only. So stay connected till the end to acquire this useful knowledge. If you are new here, then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century. So when we look at machine learning algorithms, there is no one solution or one approach that fits all. Choosing a machine learning algorithm can, you know, sometimes be a very confusing and daunting task because it depends upon a number of factors which are shown here on the screen. But I'm going to take an algorithmic approach to pick an appropriate algorithm for building a machine learning model. Okay, so you no more have to worry about uh, which algorithm do I need to pick for a particular business problem. You just need to take this approach to find that out. So let's get started. Uh, we will start from top right corner where there is, you know, orange uh, start circle. Uh, please note that blue circles are conditions on the basis of which we, uh, you know, can either select yes or no. Yes is depicted by green uh, arrow and no is depicted by red arrow. Uh, there are orange arrows as well, which depicts a particular entity as either not working or the result is not defined. Okay, so now the green rectangular boxes are nothing but uh, individual algorithms in a specific category of algorithm, right? So we have a spe uh, specific categories like classification, uh, regression, clustering, as well as dimensionality reduction. Uh, so I'm taking an assumption here that you are already aware of what classification, clustering, regression and dimensionality reduction are. If not, then stay tuned because I'm going to add the related content in my data science bootcamp series starting next week. So in the series, I'm going to explain theory around uh, each algorithm in the above mentioned categories and we'll be doing some practical hands-on as well to build machine learning projects including models using scikit-learn as well as using the distribution uh, distributed computing such as a spark ml lib okay so please remember that i'm going to show you the both both of the flavors uh, the, using the scikit-learn i'm going to build the model as well as using the spark ml lib so i'm going to use spark as well to build these models so moving on let's move on to the left hand side of the start button here if the number of samples or records or observations are less than 15 then there is a need to extract some more data from either relational database or flat files or from NoSQL database on the other hand if the number of samples or records or observations are greater than 50 then we will check if uh, you know the predict if we are uh, predicting a category like spam not spam uh, whether a person should be kept on low income group category or medium income group category or high income group category if the answer is yes then we will move on to check if the data is labeled or not meaning whether we have target or uh, dependent variable or not uh, if the answer is yes then it means that it's a classification problem okay now we need to check if the number of observations or sample or records in a data set are less than 100,000. If the answer is yes, then it means that we can opt for a linear SVC or support vector classifier algorithm. If somehow linear S SVC doesn't give right results or accuracy, then we will check if the data is text or not. If it is text uh, data, then we should opt for naive Bayes algorithm for classification purpose 
this algorithm basically is used for classifying text sentiments of users to perform sentiment analysis and it, and it is just one application of it sentiment analysis on the other hand if uh, the data is uh, non textual in nature then we should opt for knn or k nearest neighbor algorithm if somehow this algorithm doesn't work or give right results or accuracy then we should try to build a uh, you know a model using either svc that is support vector classifier or ensemble classifier now coming back to uh, the number of samples or observations okay if let's say the number of samples in a data sets are greater than 100000 then we should pick sgd or stochastic gradient descent classifier if this classifier doesn't uh, give uh, the right result or accuracy then we should opt for kernel as approximation classifier uh, this actually pretty much covers classification family of algorithm now coming back to the condition where we were checking if the data is labeled data or not let's say we uh, don't have labeled data that is no target or dependent variable available in the data set then we will fall into clustering category of algorithms or clustering family of algorithms where we will check uh, another condition to understand if the number of categories are known to us or not if the number of categories are known then we will check uh, if the number of observations or samples are less than 10,000 in a data set if the answer is yes, then we should opt for or pick k-means algorithm. If somehow k-means algorithm, uh, you know, gives a bad accuracy or bad results, then we should either opt for spectral clustering or GMM, that is Gaussian uh, mixture model clustering. Now coming back to uh, number of observations or samples, if the number of samples in a data set are not uh, less than 10,000, then we should opt for mini batch k means clustering for our business problem now let's go uh, one step back to check if the number of categories are known if in this case the answer is no that is we don't know the number of defined categories for our business problem then we will check if the number of uh, samples or observations in a given uh, data set if the number of observations are less than 10,000 then we should opt for algorithms like mean shift or VBGMM which stands for variational Bayesian Gaussian mixture model okay if on the other hand the number of samples or observations are not less than 10,000 then it's pretty difficult to you know define a model for a given business problem now let's step back a bit further where we were checking if uh, you know um, we were predicting a category or not so here if in case we are not predicting a category then we will move to check if there is a requirement to predict a quantity or not if let's say we are predicting a quantity then we will fall into regression family of algorithms here first we will try to find out if our data set has less than 100,000 samples or observations. If the number of observations are greater than 100,000 then we will choose uh, SGD or a stochastic gradient descent regressor. Otherwise we will check one more condition to decide if few fe features uh, should be important from prediction point of view. If that's true then we, sh we would choose algorithms like lasso or elastic net. Otherwise, we would pick algorithms like Ridge Regression or SVR with kernel defined as linear. Now, SVR stands for Support Vector uh, Machine Regression here. And the kernel equals to linear means that the graph will be a straight line in this case. So, let me show you uh, how the graph will look like. So, here is the uh, Support Vector Regression and you can see the for kernel equals to linear this blue graph okay so uh, here the kernel equals to linear means that the graph will be a, a straight line as you can see here it's a straight line right in this case so moving on uh, let's say neither of ridge regression or SVR is a uh, is working or giving right accuracy then uh, you know we can opt for uh, again SVR 
but this time the kernel uh, would be equals to rbf which is also a default kernel so in that case the image uh, the graph will look like this okay so this is rbf model uh, or kernel equals to rbf so here kernel equals to rbf means uh, graph will be curvy in nature as you can see here right and we can also try fitting a model on uh, in fact uh, ensemble regressor right or an ensemble regressor algorithm now step back once again to uh, a condition where we were checking a condition of whether we have a requirement of predicting a quantity or not so let's say your requirement was not to predict our quantity rather you just wanted to take a look at features uh, or independent variables such that you wanted uh, to shortlist the independent variables having maximum variability uh, maybe from you know um, thousands of columns of your data set so that means we are falling into dimensionality reduction family of algorithms now as we know that it's not possible to build a model with thousands of uh, variables or columns in a data set so we try to find out the limited number of variables or independent variables or columns uh, or features to generate predictions and hence we use algorithms in this category to solve this purpose right so we kind of uh, perform some dimensionality reduction or reducing the number of variables which can actually provide the still the uh, uh, you know uh, comparable accuracy when it comes to uh, building up prediction models now we pick a randomized pca or principal component analysis here if this algo is not giving right results then you can move forward to you know again check if the number of samples are less than 10000 or not if not then we can pick or choose kernel approximation uh, approximation algorithm otherwise we can either opt for isomap or spectral embedding if neither of these algorithms work then we can pick lle or local linear embedding algorithm okay so now let's step back to condition where we were uh, checking uh, the condition of just uh, taking a look at features right now if the answer is no here then we can assume that we have you know uh, have a hard time or tough luck to choose an algorithm for our business problem so folks this is it for this video to conclude i explained how to choose an appropriate algorithm efficiently for the given business problem so that you don't have to look around here and there so let me ask you a question from today's video is there any other way or method you could you actually try to use to shortlist an algorithm for your needs please post your comments in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback you can also ask your technical questions in the comment section uh, i will be glad to answer your questions if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming videos so keep on watching thank you